how people learn about us and what they hear in the community about us. So that's one of our questions. And a lot of times they said they've heard us on the radio or they heard something on the radio that really touched them or a member of their family. WOCA has been extremely helpful in Strive's goals to educate the community. WOCA gets results. That was the sound of a tree falling. It could be your tree. You're going to have it trimmed, but never got around to calling Pride Tree Service. It could have fallen in a field, and now all you have to do is call Pride Tree Service, and they'll have it quickly out of the way for a great price. But don't wait until the tree falls. It may not fall in the field. It may hit your car, your house, or worse. So call Pride Tree Service today and avoid all those headaches before they happen. Pride Tree Service, 572-2510. That's 572-2510. Whether you're just starting out in your career or ready to make a change, being a commercial pilot is within your reach. The FAA has predicted that in the next few years, the number of planes in the sky will double, and that means a lot more jobs in aviation. Ocala Aviation has teamed up with an accredited university, enabling you to get a college degree in aviation while training to be a commercial pilot. And with options like financial aid, grants, and scholarships, it's never been a better time to get your new career in aviation started today. For more information, call me at Ocala Aviation, 352-861-7484. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 25 minutes before 11 o'clock. One of the things we take for granted in the United States of America is the idea that you do have um, the freedom to start your own business. It's an awesome, it's an awesome freedom. And uh, so many times we hear stories about people who are not born here. They come here, they immigrate here, and they and their family start a business. And next thing you know, they're they're doing very, very well for themselves. And if you dig deeper and start to have a conversation with them about what life was like wherever is they moved from uh the one thing that prevented them from having the good life they have here is that they were not able to start and maintain their own business and uh, if anybody thinks that starting a business is easy then you've never started a business it's not always easy being an entrepreneur is a wonderful thing and it's it's wonderful that we have that opportunity but how many people try to do something and then they don't succeed and they end up just giving up on the whole entrepreneurial thing well maybe a little help on how to be an entrepreneur would be apropos is that a good word robin yes it is. steve mariotti is the founder of the network for teaching entrepreneurship and bringing entrepreneurship education to low-income youth which is outstanding i just love this whole idea his book is called an entrepreneur's manifesto good morning steve thank you for being on the air with us today Good morning. I'm really glad to be here. Yeah, I'm from New York, too. And you you were a public high school teacher in New York City? I sure was. I uh, lived in New York City 37 years and recently retired to write full-time. I now live in Princeton, New Jersey. Oh, in Princeton, okay. But I taught, I, I taught primarily in the South Bronx and at Rikers Island, which is a high sc- has a high school for kids that are uh, in jail there. Oh, is that right? See, I, uh, I, I was born in the South Bronx. I d- don't remember. We moved out to Long Island before I was old enough to see the daylight, I think. But, but I, I often would think when I would be in the city, when you see somebody uh, who's obviously destitute, you would often say, oh, my gosh, there's an opportunity somehow, some way. And, and, uh, and of course, it's not always a snap of the finger. Um, but, but I think when you reach out to the, to the low income, especially the youth, like, like you're doing with this book, I, I think you are, you, you'll never know how many lives you've changed before they even got. In other words, you're going to cut it off at the past before they have the bad stuff happen to them. Exactly. I, my whole career has been arguing that. Every young person before they graduate from high school should learn the basics of starting a small business. And that way if they have a boss that doesn't like them or they um, get in a bad situation, they get ill, uh, or just all the ups and downs of life, they always have the skills to get through it by starting a small business. And I would advocate that all over the world, to be honest. The, uh, the information in the book goes beyond the lessons we learn when we open up a lemonade stand. Uh, you, you even talk about the, how politics sometimes gets in the way. Lo- local legislation, for example, local ordinances. 
Yeah, that's a real problem. Uh, you know, on the federal level, we've got a, you know, just a bizarrely complicated tax code, uh, which I really hope gets fixed. Um, I went to Vietnam recently, which was a big deal to me because that was my generation's albatross, you know? Yeah. And they have a 10% flat tax. And uh, poor people, people under a certain income level, pay no tax at all. And I said, where did you get that idea? And they said, well, we're watching the um, presidential debates about 10 years ago, and we saw Steve Forbes advocate that. And within a week, we totally changed our tax code. <laughs> oh, wow. Isn't I that, love that. Isn't that, that amazing? Wow, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 well, we couldn't do things that quickly here, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Um, so, so the thing is this. How do you get the book into the hands of the low-income youth? How, and, and I'm guessing the ones who pick it up and really embrace it are already that, uh, you know, one step ahead of their peers who don't embrace it. Uh, well, we go in through the uh, school systems, and um, so they'll get the book through a sponsor or from our own fundraising for free. Okay. And I then we also supply a teacher, and the teacher uh, will also work with them. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That, 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 yeah. You're handing them a million dollars, and they don't even realize it. Do they Do they realize the amazing thing that you just expressed to us, that how that will enrich, enrich their lives? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Most kids in poverty have what's called street smarts. That's how they stayed alive till yeah. high school. Yeah. And in a very short period of time, like 20 minutes, they see the relationship between street smarts and business smarts. And I think that's a huge advantage that we have uh, in turning around all these, you know, really negative situations into a renaissance. It seems, uh, at least in our, our area here in Florida, that entrepreneurism seems to be embraced more by the people that legally immigrate here and they open up convenience stores, hotels, things like that. But then you've got people that were born and raised here and they're just uh, so happy being on welfare and being on food stamps. Why is there no motivation for them? Well, um... There's another way of looking at it, too, and it took me a long time to, to see this insight. But once somebody goes in to the welfare system, uh, even, let's say, at the age of 18, which often happens uh, that they're encouraged by the social worker to continue in, on the welfare, and, uh, and they, can, they can have a bank account and they can't make any side income, and uh, the, they're almost trapped in this cult of a welfare cult that they're, they're um, conditioned to go into before they're out of their teen, teenage years, where somebody who comes over here often comes a little bit older and isn't aware or encouraged to go into the welfare system. So in a way, they have a huge advantage um, but it, it's a it's a it's a flaw in our system. It's a tragic flaw. It's kept tens and tens and tens of millions of Americans that I think would be great entrepreneurs, really hard workers, but locked into this you know really uh, destructive um, uh, system that encourages them to stay in the system. And once you're in the system, you really can't really get out of it mm. because it starts with a base um, a monthly retainer plus food stamps, then uh, subsidized housing, then free housing. Um, right, right. Uh, it, it, when, when you look at it, it's just almost bizarre uh, and, and unbelievable how yeah. many people are unable to get out of the oh system even if they wanted to. Oh my gosh, and if they would pay attention to what you're saying and what you're instructing in the book and the stories you tell in the book, it is it is like a golden opportunity. I, I, I don't know that I've had this important of a book to talk about on this show for a very long time. Um, I, I want to encourage our listeners, look, don't get to that point where where you're waiting on the government to... And don't be the guy saying, yay, they're so, they're so unfair, you could change your life for the better yourself. Exactly. And, and you know, nobody's blaming you if you don't know how to do it. 
because that's the part of entrepreneurship where we all enter entrepreneurship blindsided. Uh, so so uh, you can prevent some mistakes. The Entrepreneur's Manifesto is the book that Steve Mariotti wrote. I really think you're going to change lives and you'll never know it, Steve. I think you're never going to get the letters like you got from the prison. Uh, y- your work, by the way, as a volunteer in the prison is just a- un- outstanding. It's unbelievable. So, Why, thank you. I'm really flattered. Thank you for what you're doing. Uh, all right, I have a copy of the book. I'd like to give it away. Call me if you want it. I promise you it'll change somebody's life, especially if that person is a and got the entrepreneurial spirit. Um, it doesn't have to be somebody young or poor, uh, no, by the not way. No, not at all. Uh, and, and Steve...